this is her. This is my brand new EDC. That's the wall, and it breaks. This time, we're talking about my brand new EDC. I don't know if y'all been waiting on this man or not, but uh, this is her. This is my brand new EDC. Uh, this is a Glock 19 Gen 4, nine millimeter, if you don't know. We are clean and clear. Nothing's in the chamber, nothing's in the magazine. Safe direction. I'm gonna start this video just letting you guys know everything I've done to her, some of the issues I've had, the pros, cons, the good, the bads, everything. Make sure that y'all go ahead and slap that like button, turn on those post notifications so you can be notified every time I drop a new banger. And of course, subscribe to the channel, man. We on our way to 100K. And if you needed this breakdown of what this really is, um, come on, man, you got to. So let's go ahead and jump straight into it, man. I don't wanna drag this out too long. So originally this was Rambo J's uh, 19X MOS, I'm sorry, I'll say 19X. This was Rambo J's night Glock 19 uh, Gen 4 MOS, but I ended up trading him for my 43X because my hands are huge. And for anybody with big hands, you should already know, man, it is hard as hell. Um, to be accurate with a gun that's like real skinny and it's jumping around in your hands You really can't get a good grip on it. Your thumb is falling off of it Blah 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 the story goes on and it goes on. Uh, this is perfect This is uh, right my size as of right now and we going into the winter time So this is my winter time EDC and I'm not for sure about summer just yet um, I shot GHG's SIG 360p365 XL macro I want to say and it's compensated and that was a beast that was that was definitely a beast so I'm thinking about that for sure um, but for right now we're gonna stick to this uh, this this Glock 19 can't go wrong from the jump ah, y'all can tell I got a little extra meat at the front it's the ramjet with the uh, The ramjet is the actual barrel and the afterburner is the comp. And one thing I like about this comp is you don't have to time it, it doesn't screw on. It actually fits on pretty smooth. Um, it literally just slides on and then right here you got like a set screw and you just put that right in and you pretty much you're good to go. I can honestly say I've seen about yeah, about a 30 to 45% reduce in recoil. I'm not 100% for sure though, because um, there's a lot of things on this gun that actually reduces recoil, and I'm gonna get to those pretty soon. Now the next thing is I have Trigicon suppressor height night sights um, so that I can co-witness. I have the Olight Valkyrie Turbo. Um, I like this light because it's more of a beam rather than just a lot of flooding. Uh, you can see way further with this light than you could with any other light. This is just my preference. Doesn't mean it should be yours, but this is just, I don't know, something that stood out to me. Now with this Olight, it has press buttons on it. You press it once, it stays on a quick press. Then you have long press, which is on as long as you press it. I don't know. I kind of prefer this over the the switch. I don't, I mean, I've tried a, what is that, a Surefire? And with the switches, I don't know, sometimes that can be a little hard to press. That's just my opinion. Uh, Y'all's might work a little different. The one I'm probably used was probably new. I don't know, but it was a little harder for me. This has the quick release mount. You can take it off and you can put it right back on. So that's uh, that was actually a plus for me as well. Uh, the trigger is a Timney trigger. I believe this is the competition one. I'm not 100% for sure, but um, this is a drop-in trigger. All right, y'all ready? That's the wall, and it breaks. 
And one thing I like about this trigger, it's a 90% break. Uh, I mean, 90, 90 degree break, as y'all can tell. Um, when she let it go, it comes back, so it's good to dry fire. It doesn't stay locked back like the factory. We have a Primary Arms SLX RS10 red dot. This red dot is a beast. It's a three MOA red dot, and I love it. Um, it has a shake away. Uh, it does not have a, um, what's the thing, the little solar powered whatever, but that's fine, that's fine. Uh, this battery holds up to, um, you know, depending on the level that you have your red dot on, which I kind of keep mine on a medium level, about 40,000 hours, so that was, you know, a straight blessing. I like how low it sits. It comes with its own, um, its own mounting plate for Glocks. So basically it sits low let me see if you can see that. And so it's easier to co-witness. And it's about, it sits about maybe 30% of the glass. So it's not too high where you can't see your red dot, but it's, it's just low enough so you still co-witness just in case something goes bad. But, um, and you know, your battery dies, but I love the low profile of it. And I love how it doesn't like super stick out on the sides. Let me see, oh, my screen, okay. So it doesn't, it doesn't like stick out from the sides. I notice a lot of red dots, they like kind of protrude from the sides and it just looks ugly to me. But I like this red dot because it don't do that. And it sits low, it's a nice compact size. I like how it has this little hump in it. So just in case I do drop it or something like that, the glass is protected. There we go. I don't know if y'all can see that red dot. So, yeah, that's the red dot, man. So next, I have the flared magwell. This was actually a budget purchase off of Amazon. I found this on Amazon. Just type in Glock 19 flared magwell. I think I paid like $16 for it. I mean, it works, it's functional. Uh, not the most comfortable if you got bigger hands. Like right here, I noticed like where my pinky sits at, it has like a little ledge. So it just kind of feels a little uncomfortable, but you get used to it. Um, and it does have like gaps around it. Other than that, I mean, if you're not like a real like particular person, which I am, but I'm not. Um, yeah, but if you're not really particular on it and you just want it to function right, fish your hand good, I say get it. Lastly, the last thing that is on this gun, yeah, some internals are different. That is a pure tungsten guide rod. And uh, it makes the gun heavier and it helps with recoil. And this is a 15 pound spring. So yeah, that that's another <laughs> new thing. I think that's it though. That's That's all, that's everything on this gun. And it's a flat shooter. I wouldn't say like, you know, staccato flat, but I definitely say it's flat to the point where you can really notice the difference and it's easier to shoot. Let's talk about the pros and the cons. Pros is these upgrades uh, dramatically help, for sure. Um, from the flared mag well, it's gonna help hold your hand in place. The red dot is gonna help you acquire your target quicker. Um, and you know, make those shots. Of course, suppressor, height, night sights uh, from Trigicon. Of course, you know, they're metal, so they're not gonna break off easy. And you can co-witness, radiant ramjet afterburner combination, uh, next level helps reduce recoil. The light, good light, and it helps reduce recoil because it's on the front of the gun. And lastly, what I would say is, of course, the tungsten guide rod, same thing. Let me say this about the trigger. The trigger, yes, it is good. This is a very good trigger. You know, again, wall breaks, right? Love, 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 love this trigger. But with the love comes a little bit of hate. And let me tell you why. Uh, so basically, and I mean, you can Google this. The trigger bar 
is basically too fat when it comes from the factory and it requires some extra love and care and attention. You can go online and look that up for yourself. Uh, just type in Glock Timmy Trigger Fix or something like that and you're gonna see plenty of videos pop up. I kept running into light promise strikes because of the pin, the firing pin, little lever thing, it rubs up against the trigger bar. And so when it releases and it rubs up against the trigger bar, it slows it down, which causes light promise strikes. That's when the tender love and care comes into play. So um, that was a headache. Um, I'm gonna show y'all some clips right now from Rainbow J's video where we ran a drill and I kept dealing with it time and time and time again. Annoying, right? I know. After I gave it some tender love and care, had a chance to take it back out on the range today, and let me show y'all that footage. What's good with y'all, man? We tested out the new Glock build, and we using nine millimeter, 115 grain ammo. So we just wanna see if she runs the mag, probably like about 10 rounds. Flawlessly and how she grew with all the upgrades. Let's see what happens. We are Clear, no jams. Pretty straight to me. We finna run a couple more tests, a couple more rapid fires, and uh, let's see what happens. All right, let's try to do accuracy. Got four red dots around the target. I'm trying to get the target in there too. Can you see target? Okay. Clear, no jams. She ran flawless. And we used. Uh, we ran through 100 rounds with no malfunctions. I ran through 100 rounds uh, of 115, some cheap ammo. Um, even all the primers looked like they came from different spots or like they were just like, it was no consistency with the primers, uh, as you can tell. I had no issues with this gun at all. No light primer strikes through 100 rounds. Um, and again, as y'all can tell, 
I'm doing different drills. You know, I'm shooting five at a time, shooting 10 at a time, double taps, all of that with no issue. So I think the problem is solved. Um, only time will tell. That was probably my biggest issue. One more thing I would like to see from this gun. This gun is very front heavy now because you got the Tungsten God Rod, the Ramjet Afterburner, the Olight, and it's real like, you know, kind of front heavy, kind of like my Koenig was. Maybe like a, something like a weight maybe here to kind of help balance it out. But typically if I got a full magazine, like it's perfect. It's like the perfect weight. But if I'm using like a standard Glock 19 mag, it can still be like a little front heavy. So what I would like to do is I would like to try to see, you know, if they make like weights or something like that, I can put into this, uh, the backside of this. And I think that would pretty much be it. Other thing is this Timmy trigger is really light. I think it's coming in at about like three and a half pounds. So for concealed carry, that's light. Um, I would like to see this around the four pound mark. So I'm gonna be looking for fixes from that. I actually think I may have a sponsor um, coming up uh, that actually can help me out with that. But I mean that, you know, pretty much concludes everything, man. That's this is my this is my baby, man. This is my new this is my new build. Let me know what y'all think in the comments. You know, if it's ugly, if you prefer your Taurus or High Point. And yeah, man, this is going to be probably the new... No, nah, this is the new EDC. I'm waiting for my holster. My holster actually made it in yesterday, but I'm currently out of town. So um, hopefully everything fits good there because I ended up doing a Surefire X300 light combo with the Glock 19. Well, I did a Glock 17 because the Radiant... Uh, afterburner, it extends it out to a uh, a Glock 17 esque uh, frame. So yeah, I ordered a Glock 17 holster with a Surefire X300. So I'm hoping that this thing fits it. If not, I might have to spend $300 on a light. Yeah, I don't wanna do that. Next, we're gonna take this out to the bros and they gonna let us know if it's a cop or a drop. We gonna let them shoot it, compare it up to their Glocks. And you know, just try to see what they think about it, man. But let me know in the comments what you guys think. I appreciate y'all for rocking with me. We on our way to 100K. Be sure to smash that subscribe button. Like the video, drop a comment. It really helps the channel out. Cause uh, yeah, we on our way up, man. 100K Chris on the way. Let's go. Oh, 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 oh,